Hi there. I'm going to now do a second video here. I'm going to present how to do some of the graphical analysis for your kinetics experiment. So let me start by bringing up where we left off in the first video, which is we had calculated the concentration, the initial concentration of potassium iodide for all five experiments at room temperature. We then took the log of those values we had calculated the initial concentration of hydrogen peroxide for all five experiments and had taken the log of those values as well. So we have all those. Now, what I've done down here at the bottom is I've copied and pasted them reversed. So now the Ki is first and the rate is second, the logs, right? The reason I've done that is that when you use spreadsheet programs, they very often will take the first column and make that X and take the second column and make that Y. But we wanna do the reverse um, from what's up here. We want the X to be here, to be the concentration of Ki, and we want the Y to be the rate, the logs, of course, and the same thing for H2O2. Okay, so I've kind of labeled this so you can see it. If you put this one first, now there's a way you can tell the software to reverse it, and that's fine, but I just wanted to start off with the right amount, with the right um, designation. So here's what I'm going to do. The goal of these two graphs I'm going to talk about are to get the orders of the reactants. So remember, the rate is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of Ki to the, I'll put it X, times the concentration of H2O2 raised to the Y, okay? And we're gonna to try to find K, the rate constant. We're gonna to try to find X, the order of Ki, and Y, the order of H2O2. Now, by the way, it doesn't really matter which one you call X, which one you call Y. You could write H2O2 to the X times Ki to the Y, doesn't matter what the order is. The point is we want to find out what X and Y are, the orders of each reactant, and then we want to find K from them. So we're going to use a graphical analysis. Here's what we're going to do. What if we take, if we graph the log of the rate versus the log of the concentration of Ki, Okay, if we do a graph on that, we'll do what's called linear regression. And when you do linear regression, you get the slope of a line. And what we're going to say is the slope of the line is equal to x. Okay, it will give us the order of that reactant when we do that linear regression. Likewise, if we graph the log of the rate versus the log of the concentration of H2O2, the peroxide, and then do linear regression, the slope of that line will give us y. And we'll get X and Y that way. We'll get the orders of the reactants that way. It's very cool. Now, let me show you how to do it. It's a little tricky. I'm using Google Docs again. So I have the log of Ki and I have the log of the rate. Now I'm just gonna pick the first three. Okay, so I'm just highlighting the first three rows there. The reason is we only wanna look at how the concentration change is affecting the rate. So the last two values, the concentration doesn't change. So we're not interested in that for the Ki. So I highlighted those. Now we're going to come up to insert and we're going to insert a chart. And it looks like it went directly to the um, scatter plot, which is cool. So we'll do that. Now I'm going to click a point here on the graph. I have three points here. Okay. Common mistake is people graph all five. You only want to do three. I'm going to put a trend line in there. And I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna show what's called the correlation um, there. And our custom label right below that, oops, sorry. Uh, label right above there. 
See how it says label? I'm going to say use equation. I don't know why it's set up that way, but it is. Can I move this around? Oops. There we go. I can move this around. Okay. Now, what this says is that if you graph the log of the rate of the reaction versus the log of the initial concentration of Ki, you're going to get a, a line. Okay. I'm doing a linear graph. I'm telling draw a line. Draw the line of best fit. It's going to give me a slope. The slope is 0.979 times x, which is the log of ki, plus negative 0 0.0684, which is the y-intercept. So remember, a line is y equals mx plus b. So y equals mx plus b. r squared is the correlation. The closer that is to 1, the more linear it is, the more correlated the x and the y values are to each other, linear in this case. Um, and so what we're really, we're just interested in the slope, 0.797. So you know, typically a slope would be one or two, but we're going to go ahead and use, I think in the instructions it says put two significant digits when you read through the procedure. So that would be 0 0.80, okay? Now we can, um, you know, you can do some editing here. And this is going to be graph one. Effect of concentration, Ki concentration, on rate. Okay, that's just one possible title that I could give it. It looks like it automatically picked the right labels down there, so that's good. I'm going to take my little equation here. This is the graph with the linear fit and all of that. Now, actually, it, you, know, you know, sometimes people will say, hey, let's change our axes a little bit. So maybe we'll go from on the, on the y-axis I think this is y-axis. We might just go from like negative 1.5, which is where it is, up to maybe negative 0.5. And then that's just going to make it take up a little more of the space, and that's fine. Okay, so that's the graph. You want to copy and paste this into your Word, your document, you know, that you're going to present as a, as a report. And that graph looks pretty good there, right? So it's point. To two significant figures, that would be 0 0.80. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to actually get rid of that graph because I don't want it to, to you know, be in our way. So, you know, your slope equals x, and that's 0 0.80. And that's the value you're going to use in your calculations. Okay. Now, we want to, let me just actually put it in the next one down. We want to do the same thing for the H2O2, okay? So again, I've pasted this so that it's the log of the concentration and then the log of the rate. We just want to pick the three where the concentration is changing, not all five. Otherwise, you get it won't give you a very good result. So just those three. Insert a chart, okay? There it is. I'm going to click. Now, again, let me, let me do this first, actually. I'll change this. So this is graph two. It's always a good idea to really label things so you know what it is. Effect of H2O2 concentration on rate. You could say rate of reaction, depends what, you know, whatever you want to do. Okay, I'm going to click a point there. And then I'm going to come over here and scroll down. I'm going to hit trend line. Um, I'm going to come down here and say show r squared, and then above that, I'm going to say use the equation as the label. Um, again, I think that's kind of funky that that's what you have to do to get it to do that. Um, you could, again, change the scale here from negative 0.25 as the maximum and negative 1 as the minimum. But the point is, r squared is 1, so it's perfect data. I made up the numbers. That's why it's perfect. Don't worry about it. Um, 0.83, okay? 0.83 is your slope. So that's what you're looking for, 0.83. Okay, oops. Oh, doesn't want to delete it. There we go. So 0.83. All right, so we have our slope. Oh, I, and I should say that's y, right? Again, you know, which one is X, which one is Y, it doesn't matter. You're just looking at where it's changing concentration. That's going to give you the exponent for that. So now here's the way we could write this. We could say rate equals K 
K times concentration of H2O2 raised to the 0 0.83 times the concentration of Ki raised to the 0 0.80. Again, it doesn't matter which one you call X and Y. It's just, you just want to make sure that you have the correct value for the correct reactant, right? So H2O2 goes first, 0.83. Ki goes second, 0 0.80, but you could put Ki to the 0 0.80 first and then H2O2 to the 0.83, that doesn't matter. That's not important. The point is you have those exponents. That is now gonna allow you to calculate the, the rate constant. Okay, so let me bring up all down here, right? These are all, remember we had to do all these things to get to that point. This is the explanation here. I'm sorry, there's no page numbers on here, but this is explaining the whole idea of doing those graphs in order to get the slopes, okay? So here, for example, the slope was 0.88 or 0.89, I guess. And here it was 1.1, 1 1.0, 1 whichever one you wanna make it, okay? Now we get to this point. You've got those values, M and N, they call it instead of X and Y. And that's misspelled right there. Now to find the rate constant, you take your initial rate for each experiment and divide that by the concentration of the reactant raised to the exponent, 0.83 and 0 0.80, okay? So you're gonna do that five times. So that's why you're gonna have here five values of K, okay? So what do they want you to do? They want you to come back, copy and paste that H2O2 concentration that you had from the earlier, from the earlier tables. Rewrite them here. Then raise them to the 0.83. Take those, copy and paste them, raise them to the 0 0.80. You're gonna have different, I think you're gonna have different slopes. I'm just making those slopes up from the data I just put up there. The initial rate, you have those values from the earlier one as well. Now K, that's where you're gonna use this equation right here. Take the initial rate for experiment one, divide that by the concentration raised to the 0.83 to the M, divide that by the concentration of Ki, I minus or Ki to the N, and you're gonna get five values of K. They should all be pretty close to each other. This is just asking you in this table to write down your values of your slopes, just writing the slopes down so that we can tell that's what we've used here, okay? Average value of K, I hope you know how to do an average, right? If you have five numbers and they're all measuring the same thing, you add them all up and divide by five. The standard deviation might be a little bit more complicated for you. With the standard deviation, you have to use this formula, or you can use this formula here. What you do is you take the first value of K and subtract from that the average. K here is the average. So you calculated the average, then square it. Then add to that the second value of K minus the average squared, and go all the way up to the fifth value minus the average squared. Add them all up, you'll have five numbers, divide by n minus one, you did it five times, so five minus one is four. Do the ratio, take the square root of that, okay? So let me see if I can um, kind of run you through, I'm just gonna make up some numbers here, just so that I can show you, okay? So I'm gonna put my rate here, okay? I'm gonna do you know concentration of H2O2, concentration of H2O2 raised to the M. I'm not using XY now. I'm, well, you know, let me be consistent. I'll use XY. I had Y there, right? And then KI. And then um, concentration of KI raised to the X. I'm just trying to use the same notation. And then we have the rate, we have all that. And then I think it's just K, right? So then let me just come back over here. Okay, so the initial rate's over here. So four columns, then initial rate, and then K. So let's, let's be consistent.
and then you get k. Okay, so I'm just, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make up some numbers here. 0 0.1. Actually, let's, I'm going to try to make, yeah, 0 0.1. Well, you know what? Actually, yeah, I'll just do it that way. Okay. And then let's do like, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and then 0 0.4, right? Okay. Now, again, let's say that, let's say that our y equals 0.83 and our x equals 0 0.80. Okay. Let me put those numbers in. So here's how you do it. Equal sign, click on this guy, do the caret. See the caret there? And then 0 0.83. And then you can do your autofill right there because it's just going to do the same thing. Okay, see all that? Um, same thing here. So equal sign this concentration, caret 0 0.80, and then autofill. Okay. And then, you know, I forget, we had our rate, you know, like our rate was, let's say, you know, 0 0.04, 0 0.08, 0 0.12, you know, 0 0.16, 0 0.2. I'm just making up numbers. There we go. Okay, so now how would you do the rate? Coming back to that equation, you would, you would take your rate, initial rate, and then divide that by the concentration of H2O2 to the Y times, see how I'm doing times right there? Concentration of Ki to the X and then close parentheses. So it's gonna be K, I'll do it up here, K divided by the product of those two. So that's why we needed those exponents. And then same thing. This guy looks like an outlier. Did I do something wrong here? Why is that so different than the other four, the other five? G6, G6 is, oh, 0.8, I see, 0 0.08. There we go, okay. So there's your case. So now how do we do the average? I'm gonna show you how to do that. Equal sign, average of, see, put parentheses of all the ones, just click on the ones you want. Close the parentheses, boom, you got your average. Okay, that's kind of cool, right? Um, I think those numbers are wrong. Okay, that's fine. Now, okay, this is not cheating because you know even in statistics classes these days they're not making you do it. Equal sign STDEV parentheses, right? Standard deviation. Click on those five, and there you go. There's your standard deviation. Okay. So now the, the meaning of this then is that of those, this should be the same, K shouldn't change unless the temperature is changing. So for those five values, we had different values, but the average is around 1.3, okay? So, you know, we don't want to report it as 1.296604024. You know, let's, let's round it off to 1.30, okay? Three significant digits. And same thing here, you know, 0 0.27 perhaps, okay? What this means is our average is 1.3. So on average is 1.3 and our standard deviation is 0.27, which means that, you know, the range of what you would expect is anywhere from, you know, the average minus this value. So let's do a range. So the average minus the standard deviation to the average plus the standard deviation. And you know, technically speaking, what that means is that if you do this experiment a million times, 68% of the time, you should get a value that's between 1.03 and 1.57. That's essentially what you're doing. But going back to Chem 11 or Chem 100, this would be called, you know, essentially, it's a measure of your precision. The standard deviation is showing you like how close are your values to each other. The smaller the standard deviation is, 
the closer the values are together. And that means it's being more, the experiment's more consistent, okay? So let's come back to um, this graph right here. Oops, there we go. I just wanna make sure um, that you got that, I'm sorry. I think I may have just messed that up and you didn't see any of it. Okay, let me come back, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna redo this. Um, I'm gonna bring this up. Okay, I'm gonna clear these. I'm just gonna show you this one more time. I just wanna make sure that I'm sharing the right screen. There we go, okay. So here's, I just made these numbers up. Here's what you do. You take the value, the concentration, use the caret. The slope is 0.83, so 0 0.83. Fill down. So here's our concentration of Ki. Carrot is 0 0.80, whatever the slope happens to be for that. Oops, for that one. Sorry. Click on the cell. Carrot 0 0.80. Okay. okay. Now the rate, we have that, the rate constant. Just take your initial rate divided by this times this. And there we go. Okay, good. So average equal sign average of all five, close parentheses, STDEV of all five, close parentheses there, because I wasn't sure if you got that or not. Okay, so. Again, round that off to like 1.3 and 0 0.27. There's our range. You take the average minus the standard deviation, the average plus the standard deviation. That means that 68% of the time your value is gonna be somewhere in that range, okay? All right, so there's that. So now let's come back. We got this, this is all done, right? It's all done. Now we come to the effect of temperature. Okay, and again, I'm gonna make up some numbers. What we're doing is the Arrhenius plot. The Arrhenius plot says that if you graph the natural log of the rate constant over different temperatures, one over temperature, you'll get a slope that's related to the activation energy, and you'll get a y-intercept, which is related to the Arrhenius constant. So in this particular step, the data here, we're going to have five different temperatures in Celsius, five different temperatures in Kelvin, five different times in five different rates. Now, how do you get time and rate? Well, we went through that in the previous, in the previous video. It was kind of tricky how you got the rate, right? You had to divide by two because of the relationship between H2O2 and um, the amount of H2O2. Of H thiosulfate, the amount of thiosulfate that was being used up. And then you, and then you got to find K and you got to find LNK. So let me talk you through, this is table six. Let me come back over here. And bring you up for another graph here. This is table six. Okay. So I'm sorry, this is just a lot in this table here. So we have temperature in Celsius, Kelvin, time. So TC, TK, TSEC for seconds. Okay, there's our first three columns. Then we've got rate K, LN, K, and one over T. So rate K, LN, K, and then one over T. Okay, that's a lot in there. It's quite a graph. This is not simple stuff. Okay, so, you know, we had hot, hot, 
room temperature, cold, cold, right? Okay. So again, you've got a data set that you're working with that, that is in the report sheet, but I'm gonna make up some temperatures here. So I'm gonna make it five degrees C, 10 degrees C, 20 degrees C, 80 degrees C, and 90 degrees C, right? So two are cold, meaning colder than room temperature. One is at room temperature. Oops. There we go. One is at room temperature. And then two are at high temperature. Okay. Now, how do you convert that to Kelvin? You just take the temperature in Celsius and add 273.15 autofill. Okay. Now, what about the times, okay? This is where you go back and you look at the data. What times were they, okay? That's gonna be given in your report sheet. So I'm just gonna make up times here. I'm gonna say this is like 500 and this is 450. And this is gonna be the time. I'm gonna make a note. Experiment three at room temperature. So in that first part where you did experiments one through five, just copy and paste your data for experiment three. So I'll just write it here, you know. Copy, paste. You've got all that data from experiment three. And the reason is all of these different temperatures are done with the same concentrations as experiment three. So if I come back over here, to experiment three. This is experiment right three. I've got the initial rate right there and I've got K. So the initial rate is 0.12 and K is 1.69. So was that 0.12 and 0.69? 1.69, so sorry, 0.12 and then 1.69. Okay, you're just using the data that you have from experiment three. Equal sign LN, make sure you use parentheses and then click on the cell. Oops, there we go. Now one over T is easy. Equal sign one over your temperature, make sure it's in Kelvin and you got that value. In fact, all the one over T's are equal or easy. One over T. Okay, you can even just sort of grab this and bring it down. Okay, so those are all your one over T's. Now you're gonna have to go through the whole process of for the cold and the high of actually calculating the rate like you did in the first video for experiments one through five, right? So let me just briefly bring it back because you know you, you may have watched that a little while ago. How did we get all that stuff down? It come, you, you essentially start right here. You take the initial moles of S2O3 and you multiply it by half. That gives you the moles of H2O2 used. So you're going to do experiment three. So you'll have a value there. Liters is still 0.5. So that's the same. H2O2 is going to be the same every time because we're using experiment three concentrations every time. So going back to your previous table, just take this number here, concentration of H2O2. And the way we define the rate was that value, H2O2 used, divided by T. So the times are what are important, right? So whatever this happens to be, let's say it's point, you know, point 0.1. I know we have it from a preview. Actually, let's, come on, we can do it. Let's go back to the previous table. Do I have it there? Oh, I thought it was right there. I guess it's not there anymore. Wait, let's see. H2O2 used. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's not there anymore. Somehow lost it. Those are just all the initial concentrations. So it's not the that's not the rate actually. So let's come back. Let's come back over here. Okay. So H2O2 used that. You're gonna have that value right there. And remember, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be the same every time because this is the same every time. And then you're multiplying it by half. So whatever number you have there, that's fine. But then you divide it by the time to get the rate. Okay.
Okay, so you take the H2O2 years for experiment three divided by the time, and that gives you the rate. Okay, so let me come back over here to six. Okay, so I'm going to make up rates now. I'm going to say this is like 0.02 and 0.03. And then this one is like, you know, zero, uh, 1.0 and 1.2, okay? All right. Then experiment three. Now, how did we do that? You take that, to find K, you take the rate divided by the concentration of H2O2 to the exponent divided by Ki to the exponent. That's what we just did in the previous over here, that's what we did over here. That's how you get K, all right? Now, I'm just gonna make up Ks here, right? The K is what changes according to temperature. So let me make up some time here. I'm gonna call this 300, and I'm gonna call this 100, I'm gonna call this 50, I'm just making up time. So, you know, you got your the times, that'll give you the rate, now the K. Again, I have to make these up because I'm not going through all those calculations again. Um, but I'm going to make up a number of like 0. 0.0, you see the right there's 0.0, I'm sorry, K. So I'm going to make 0. 0.2, um, 0. 0.4, um, 7, and 9. Okay. Equal sign LN of that one. Down. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Okay, so now once you've got ln of k versus and one and and one over t again, it's the same problem. The default is to make this x and to make this y if you try to graph it. So I'm just going to copy, and then I'm going to paste values only. I'm going to copy and paste values on. I'm just trying to reverse the order they're in. Okay. And I do like to have it look a little bit, not too shabby looking. There we go. All right, now with this one, you can graph all five. You don't have to pick which ones you're graphing. These are all different temperatures. Insert a chart. Okay, good. There's our values. Click on one of the values, hit trend line. Okay, show your R squared. Above the R squared, use equation as your label. Oops. I'll bring it down here. Okay. Now I'm going to change the name here to graph three. And we're going to say this is our Arrhenius plot to find the activation energy. Yep. OK, the point of the Arrhenius is that the slope is related to, it's not equal to, but it is related to the activation energy. They're connected. OK? So our slope is essential. We have to know that value. It's minus 4,014. The other thing is the y-intercept is related to it. It's not equal to, but it is related to the Arrhenius constant. So we need that value too, okay? So let me write those values down. So I'm gonna come over here. Let me just move the graph over here to the side. And I'm gonna say that our slope is minus 4014. And our y-intercept, oops, our y-intercept is 13.4. Okay, once you've got those values, you're set. Of course, you want to copy and paste that graph over to your report. But now we've got everything. We can now do our analysis. Here's the relationship. The slope is equal to the negative activation energy over R. And the Arrhenius constant is equal to the natural, I'm sorry, the y-intercept is equal to the natural log of A of the Arrhenius constant. So the slope's minus E A sub A over R. So the activation energy would just be negative slope times R. R is the gas constant. 
since the y-intercept is the natural log of the constant, the constant itself is e raised to the y-intercept, okay? So let's come over here. I'm gonna put, let's do it this way, e sub a. Equal sign minus r, which is 8.3144, times the slope. That's going to give you your activation energy. And that doesn't look very good because I have some kind of, there we go. Equal sign minus 8.3144 times the slope. There we go. Now, that's going to be in joules per mole, but it is common practice to put it in kilojoules per mole. How do you convert from mole, joules per mole to kilojoules per mole? You divide by a thousand. So this over a thousand. Okay. So there you go. Let's round it. Thirty-three point four kilojoules per mole. Okay. And then let's do the um, Arrhenius constant. Equal sign. Now with the cal with the calculator, there's an E button but you gotta use EXP with computers. You just do EXP to the 13.4 exponential. That's the notation. So it's big. So I'm gonna write it as, what is that? 660,000, 660 unit. It's, used, it's reciprocal seconds or units, doesn't really matter. So there's our Arrhenius constant. Refer to the lecture, um, the lecture videos. To, it will tell you what activation energy is. It will tell you what the Arrhenius constant is, but that's how we figure it out here, okay? By the time you're done with all this, you should have three graphs. You should have a rate constant value for the five experiments with an average and a standard deviation. You should have the equation for the rate law, meaning rate equals K times H2O2 raised to, you should have the value. What, what did you come up with? Did you come up with 0 0.80? Did you come up with 0.89? Whatever it is, times the concentration of Ki, raised to the, I don't know, 0.83, whatever the values came out. So you gotta have that, you gotta have your value of K. You're gonna do the average and the standard deviation, okay? Then you're gonna have your activation energy and then you're gonna have your Arrhenius constant. You're gonna report, you're gonna put it in sentence. These are what those values are. You're just gonna say EA equals, and say, hey, look, the activation energy is this value with these units. The Arrhenius constant is this value with, you know, the Arrhenius constant doesn't generally have units. You know, you're gonna put those into words as well, okay? Three graphs as well, right? You need two graphs, and then this third one, which is the Arrhenius. Now there's one more kind of little detail that's in here, and that's about the catalyst. So it's right here, it's, it's very little, right? It's just like, look, it happened faster, you know, whatever it happened, right? So you're just gonna take that and put that into your report as well, what happened with calculus. There's no calculations with it. Um, we could come up with calculations, but we're not gonna worry about that, okay? So there you go, so that is a lot. And I just wanna let you know, this is the most complicated experiment. It is the most complicated of all the reports that you have to do for this course. There's a couple that are tricky, but this one is the hardest. So work through this one. If you can do this one, you can do any of them, but put the effort into it and see what you can get out of it, okay?